Hi, in this quick video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect a panic button to your IDS alarm system. This happens to be an IDS X64 alarm panel, and I'm going to demonstrate how to connect your panic button. Now, the position for where the panic button is connected is sitting here, right on the end of where the zone sits. So you can see there's zone 7, 8, and over here it says P and then minus, and it says zone, P for panic zone. And what you can see is I've already connected a resistor across those two terminals, and there is already a panic button connected, and I'm gonna go through this with you step by step. Now there's the panic button, and when I depress it, what it does is it is shorting out the terminal there. So what that means is that under normal circumstances, the terminals there should be seeing a resistor of 3.3 kilo ohms. So when I have this resistor here, there is no panic condition. But if I short out this resistor, it tells the alarm that there is a panic. For example, if I happen to short it out, I will quickly demonstrate that for you. Here's the keypad, you can see there's no panic alarm. I'm going to take a fly lead with crocodile links, there you can see, and this is a short circuit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to short out the resistor. So that means I'm overriding the resistor, I heard the relay click on the alarm, and look at that, it says P1 alarm panic, and if you have a siren connected, the siren would be going off. I have disconnected the siren because I'm going gray from how many times that siren's gone off in the last hour. Right, so what happens here is you can see a panic alarm has been triggered. Why? Because I have shorted out that resistor. Now why I'm showing you that is I want to explain to you how to use the panic button when we short out these two terminals, it triggers a panic alarm. So right, how do you connect up the panic button itself? I'm now going to show you. Now over here I have a multimeter and I've set it to continuity. Continuity means it measures a short circuit and makes a sound. Listen to the sound. That is a short circuit. Can you see that I'm measuring across a steel screwdriver and obviously that is a dead short. Now when I look at my panic button, you can see that there are three contacts. It says common, NO and NC. Why does it say NO? NO means normally open and this one here says NC, normally closed. What that means is as follows. When I put my lead on the common and I put my other lead on the NC, listen to my meter and look at the display, it will go to zero, telling me it's a short circuit. That means that this is a short circuit while the button is not depressed. You see, I have not depressed the button and look at that. It's a short circuit. If I go to the NO option, you can see it's an open circuit. So when the button is not depressed, it is open. That is why it says normally open. That is why this one says normally closed. Look, it's normally closed. But if I depress the button, now I'm depressing the button. So the button is now depressed. And now when I put my other lead on the NC, look, it is now open circuited. So by pressing the button, I've changed the state from normally closed to open, and the normally open, which was an open circuit, now becomes closed. Right, so do you recall that on the alarm panel, when I shorted out these two terminals, the alarm registered a panic situation. So that means I need to press the button in order to have the panic. So it should be normally open, and when I depress the button, it actually shorts out those terminals, activating a panic alarm. So here I'm going to show you, I'm going to depress this, and now you can see it's activated the alarm. Right, so having a look at the manual, you can see that there is the layout they want. Positive, negative, so that's what I showed you, the P and then the minus. Can you see there's a resistor that says 3K3, and there's your panic button. Right, so there you can see I've connected two wires, uh, the one on the P side, the one on the minus side, and they are wired to the common and to the normally open. Does it matter which wire goes where? No, because all this is is a switch. When you depress this, all you're doing is you're shorting out those two terminals. So that, in effect, shorts out that. So you can have as many of these as you want. You can then just connect them as follows. Right, so there I've just looped that wire. I'm going to wrap it around the screw. There you can see it's wrapped around. Now I'm just going to tighten it. Right, then I just need that one to go over there. 
Right, now I have another panic button which I'm going to connect. You could daisy chain them like that, but because it's a panic button, I prefer to run it directly to the panel. If a cable gets cut or something like that, and then people have not tested their panic buttons, they will then have many panic buttons which don't work. So when it comes to panic buttons, I actually run them directly all the way back to the panel. Right, so there you can see I'm now joining these two wires, inserting it in here, and it is still there with the resistor. The resistor is still across that terminal. And now my other wire goes with the white one here. Right, so now you can see I've actually got two panic buttons wired to the panic terminal. As I said, it doesn't matter about the polarity. These could be any way around. These are just switches. All right, so if I press any one of these panic buttons, I'll start with this one. Notice it says P1 alarm. I'll just reset it. And I'll press the other one. And there you can see panic alarm. So both are working. If you'd like to see how to connect a remote panic alarm, this would be a wireless panic alarm to your IDS alarm system. Please check out my playlist on alarm systems. I explain how to do this. Thanks for watching and cheers.